My name's Ed Hill. Welcome to the world of a very unique artist living and working here on the Sunshine Coast. This is but one installment in a series of shows that we like to call Artist in the House. Artists are a breed unto themselves. They tend to work not only with emotion, but because of emotion. That's the reality of their craft. Their craft is one of discipline, drive, dedication. It almost borders on affliction at times. Theirs is an endless effort to create perfection. But in fact, it's something they can never really achieve. The reality is no artist has ever created a work that they can look at and say, that's perfection. But that's what probably drives them on to their next piece. It's that endless, tireless effort on the part of the artist to create beautiful perfection. Here on the Sunshine Coast, we're blessed with many artists of varied mediums and disciplines. Some are world-renowned. Others have yet to be discovered. They find their inspiration in the beauty of the Sunshine Coast. Indeed, some of them find the beauty stepping right outside their front door. These are very special people in a very special corner of the world. Enter then the world of the Sunshine Coast artist. Those who live with and around these artists know exactly what the title of this series refers to. Now you too can share in the emotion and the beauty of these very special people. Get to know your Sunshine Coast artists and the work that they produce. Over the next few minutes, in your home, there's an artist in the house. I'm Judy Oshovi and I'm an artist who lives within her artwork. I've been here for, for two years. I've come from the, the North Shore, where I had done a, a house uh, completely full of murals, and I ran out of wall space, and so I decided to uh, do it all over again, but in a setting that, uh, that I really loved and that was inspiring to me. And I had uh, lived here 26 years ago uh, with the beachcombers, crew and so I'd already had a taste of of the fantastic uh, scenes and nature and wanted to come back to that. Um, my son was actually born up in in Seashelt during the beachcomber uh, season and uh, so he's enjoyed being up here with me as well. So it's, it's a retreat. Um, I also am working in the city as a, as a teacher uh, temporarily um, and I've done some teaching in Gibson's, at, at uh, Gibson's Private School, uh, last year. But uh, when that job dried up, I, I had went back to Vancouver and get to see my kids and then come up on the weekends right now. I went to a Vancouver School of Art uh, right after high school. And I've done a lot of life drawing classes with Federation of Canadian Artists, watercolor classes, uh, pastel, and then um, uh, eventually got to the place where I was uh, teaching it. The first uh, real inclination that I had towards going to the art school was in um, grade 10. And I had a fantastic art teacher who um, was very flexible and um, sort of a hippie type of person. And I just thought she was so much fun and she exposed us to um, pottery and uh, working with charcoals and contes and working very large, um, working from life, um, taking us on field trips, batiking, <clears throat> and I just had so much fun with all of that that I decided um, I th that's the direction I thought I would be going. And it was um, sort of a lifestyle change for me. It was sort of this bit of a hidden part of my life because I was quite academic uh, during elementary school, although I loved art. I um, was a bit of an overachiever academically. <laughs> and um, 
So art became a way of loosening up for me and having more fun and seeing things from, from uh, a perspective that, uh, that I just loved. How about uh, the word rebellion? <laughs> um, only in the sense of, I think my father thought this was a, a little strange that I wanted to go to art school instead of um, becoming a mathematician uh, like he was. And um, <clears throat> so I had to sort of push against that opinion a little bit and just take the bull by the horns and say, yeah, th no, this is really what I want to try and go to the art school. Um, my mother was uh, very supportive. She was a very creative soul um, herself, but probably mm, uh, wasn't given the opportunities as a, as a homemaker to really explore it. But she was behind me all the way. I've done my art exclusively for a couple of years on my own. And then I added the teaching component to it um, and have had classes with um, uh, a group of eight people through my home studio in North Vancouver for about 10 years. And I would do that every weekend. So those kind of teaching um, environments are, are good, you know, socially. They're also a help financially. Um, I'm, I'm pretty entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial in the sense that I get myself out there. I'm not, um, I'm not hidden with my art. I, you know, I approach people, I approach uh, businesses, and, um, and I've been involved in a number of galleries and um, had success with that. Uh, right now, um, I've gone back to the elementary school teaching um, part-time, and uh, so that's, that's a help too. So I, I'm not under a huge pressure to make my entire living from my art. Oh, I'm a terribly emotional artist, yeah. <laughs> Probably a hopeless romantic in some ways. Um, it, uh, it, it's like turning on a, on a tap for me that, you know, I don't want to turn it off. It, it just needs to come out. Um, I, I think doing my artwork is allowing myself to be fully who I am. Um, there's times when I've painted out um, out of sadness, out of, um, out of a need, um, and there's times when I just paint for the pure joy of it. Um, it, it wants to come out of me. It, uh, if I could paint eight hours a day, I would. Um, because I have so much to paint, and I'm inspired by so many things. And I think I like to take the commonplace and make them special. Um, somebody asked me last week why I paint, um, and I thought about it for a while, and uh, probably the best answer I can come up with is that I like to share myself with others. So if you ask me if I paint to make money, um, no, that's a bonus. Um, I paint to express myself and hopefully um, connect with other people through my artwork. And I find often that um, someone will come up and, and see something that I've done and find a real connection with it because maybe their, um, their parents had a magnolia tree in their yard and I've just done some magnolias and they go, there's real meaning in that for me. And uh, so they buy the painting, and it's just great. The, the title of our show is called Artist in the House. I guess I'm um, sort of a good artist in the house, because well, my whole house is full of my art. <laughs> you're the first artist that lives in your <laughs> art. Talk yeah. about that. You're living in your art. <laughs> well, I guess I've pulled out the stops, and... Um, coming into a house that had totally white walls and white carpets um, gave me uh, uh, some c complete rain, really. And so as I lived here for the first couple of months, the ideas started coming and I 
it seemed like everywhere I would go, I would find things that, that reminded me of things or, or um, linked up somehow. For instance, the, the, uh, the shingles on the, on the wall are um, collected from the, the landfill. And uh, when I was up there getting bark mulch one day, I saw all this pile of shingles in a, and I uh, thought, that's the look I like. And uh, so I got busy and we got those up and um, I've always loved arbutus trees. And so when anybody prunes um, their arbutus trees, I'm down there collecting it. And some people know that I do that now. So they let me know if they've seen um, trees being topped. Um, it just has grown. I, uh, th I started on this floor working with um, the sunflower wall and um, what was happening is I was going down Red Roofs Road and <clears throat> saw a wonderful cluster of sunflowers the first summer and it just became a, an imprinted image for me and came home without a, a photograph, just the memory of it and, and the beauty of seeing this uh, my first summer here. Uh, and then sunflowers led to other sunflowers and so now they're on my dining room table and they're on other furniture and um, and so I worked worked through a whole sunflower kind of theme some of the some of the wildlife um, that's either framed or uh, in the murals is um, actually things that I've seen um, just uh, locally um, hawks and eagles and herons. Um, I'm just so delighted to be in an environment where I actually get to experience um, these things firsthand. I noticed that there are no, at least I haven't found any ceilings that are painted yet. Do you have, does the Michelangelo in you want to come out someday? <laughs> I absolutely hate doing ceilings because they, it, it, the dust gets in my eyes and my arms get sore and my neck gets sore. So the most I've done is um, some branches on the ceiling downstairs on the main floor, which, ex which are an extension of the branches that are actually the 3D real thing um, against the wall. I'll use anything, um, whatever, whatever I can compose and put together um, that I think works can be used. Um, but I like to work with, with the organic materials as much as possible. How do you know when a wall is done? Um, I live with it for a while. Uh, often I will think it's, it's done and a month later I'll, I'll have looked at it enough to realize that it needs a little more sunlight or needs a little more height here or there. Um, for instance, this uh, heron that I'm working on right now is only just started, but the background has been there for about a year. But I saw a lovely heron at um, Cooper's Green Park in the summer, and so I wanted to get a heron in to remind me of that experience. So some of the murals actually have gone through a whole change. Um, behind me uh, on the wall, there was more of a, a wintry kind of renaissance theme um, with darker colors, lots of burgundies. And, um, and then in the summer, I thought I'd like to show a little bit more of the, the, the spring light. And so I, I, I went ahead and, and reworked that mural until it became more of a spring theme. And then from there, it, um, it became sort of a surround mural. So tell me the story about one of your walls. Uh, the eagle, and the tree there, and the rocks, and the flowers. Is there a story that goes with that? Um, there's not so much a story. Um, I saw a photograph that I really liked with, with the, um, the eagle, and 